All right. For more on all the proceedings, let's go to News Nation's legal contributor and Law and Crime Network host Jesse Weber and trial attorney and legal analyst Misty Maris. Okay. Oh, oh I don't. I, I didn't know. You know, schizophrenia could cause death. I mean, it sounds like. I don't know. What did you make of the testimony today? So my first thought was, obviously important for Daniel Penny's case, the first thought was it looked a little bit like the George Floyd case when they said heart disease killed George Floyd. And Not the the on his neck. And the argument was, you know, out of all times, he dies from heart disease. Now, I, I think the jury might not accept this, but it doesn't mean, even if they don't accept it, doesn't mean they're going to find him guilty. They might say, you know what? He killed Jordan Neely. But then the second question is, was it justified? I think it's an important factor for the defense to pluck out. But at the end of the day, does it rebut what they heard from the medical examiner? I'm not entirely sure. This is what we call the battle of the experts, right? So we heard right. from the medical examiner one side of the case, and now we have an expert testifying to something totally different. And to Jesse's point, yes, it's about whether or not there were these other causal factors, but it's also about how the pressure and whether or not it was sustained for long enough and in a way that it would cause that result, cause somebody to go unconscious or to kill them. That's all part of this. And in addition to that, when we're talking about those other causal factors, you got to remember what's going to be on that jury sheet. The sheet is going to say, if you don't believe that this, his acts, Daniel Penny's acts, caused Jordan Neerly's death, then the causal connection is broken and you cannot convict him. So it was really important testimony for the defense. We also have had on the stand uh, a series of uh, Daniel Penny's family and friends, even his former platoon sergeant who said he was an honorable you know, Marine, served with distinction. They've all said he was a gentle person who would help others when he saw they needed help. No arrest record, unlike the victim here who had an al a long arrest record, it's worth pointing out. You know what's interesting about that? In general cases, they wouldn't call these kind of character witnesses. Why? They would be nervous that the prosecution would come forward. Okay, you want to introduce his character? Let me show you his rap sheet. I'll show you this witness who says otherwise. They one. know <laughs> how good of a person he is. They're saying, prosecution, come forward now. That's a big point for the defense there. It's going to be hard for this jury to ultimately convict Daniel Penny. They have to look at the facts. They have to look at the evidence. But the fact that they brought forward character witnesses who said he treated people with respect, he was a calm influence, the idea would be he wouldn't have done this unless he felt he had absolutely no choice but to protect the people on the train. All right, here's the big question. Does Daniel Penny take the stand in his own defense? I think yes, and, and for a couple really? of reasons. And it's again, so it's a risky. huge risk. Of course, huge risk, and it's always a game time decision. The defense is always going to look at what's on the record. Prosecutors have to prove their case. So do we really need to do this? But I think in this case, it could really benefit the defense. Now, provided there's something out there we don't know that the defense knows that could come into play, if that doesn't exist, then Daniel Penny can get up there and talk about the reasoning, speak to the justification for holding him for that period of time. Why? What was going on in his head? That's the question. And also, he can talk about the amount of pressure he exerted or didn't exert purposefully when he was holding uh, Jordan Neely down. And all of that speaks directly to the defense in this case. The only thing I'll say is it could backfire. Why? They might be winning this case already. And we've heard him already. I, we, we heard we him heard already. We heard him on the police interrogation video where he was very calm, very measured. We've heard from all the other passengers on the subway who say they were terrified and thought that Jordan Neely was going to kill them. Everything he said in that police interrogation tape was backed up by the witness. Mm -hmm. testimony. So if he says something, he wasn't cross-examined that much and yeah. I mean, he wasn't questioned that much by the detectives. If he gets on the stand, it could be a risk. May I make a quick point, though? It's not about the initial takedown of Jordan Neely, right? It's not about yeah, the it's initial about restraint. Long. It's about the six yep. minutes. And that really doesn't speak to the six minutes. That's not addressed. And that's going to be where the prosecution is focused. And okay. the defense knows that. All right. Misty Maris, Jesse Weber, thanks so much. Yeah. You know